When I was in high school, there was a teacher who really affected my life. His name is Mr. Marsh. It was the first time that anybody ever approached me about going to college. And just that seed alone pushed me to go further than I'd ever thought about going. When you're going after your dreams, you need people around you that's gonna give it to you straight, yet see your potential and, and push you to keep going and keep striving. And you gotta have a village. It, it takes a village. And that's what they do for me. And that's why I wrote this song, so that I could do the same for others. Clay Bogan, Liz Black, Grandmaster, Warren Baptiste, Dylan Kiner, Mr. Marsh. This is my village, and they inspire me to go after my dreams because each of them push past the things that were obstacles, and they're doing what they love. Carl is an awesome performer. He enjoys the performance parts of it. He, he enjoys uh, interacting with the audience. I saw this guy get on the stand. I said, who's this? Dancing all up and down the stage. <laughs> running up and down the stage. <laughs> the passion that you put into it. You had that stage presence. And I said, this guy is good. He's coming from a whole different place. He wants to impact uh, marriages, and he wants to impact the families, and he wants to impact the community. Didn't you perform something at an assembly, though? I did. I played Ribbon in the Sky by Stevie Wonder. Yes. And see, you did to me what you want to do to others, and so many years later, I still remember it. You learned to produce music or to make music and left an impression. His message and his heart are congruent. My get up and go is to write a song and do it in the studio. His get up and go is to get up and go and go out. And so I admire that um, about him and it was great to be a part of something like that. Carl and I go back to Plainfield High School. <coughs> uh, I was his teacher. Uh, <coughs> he was my student. I just remember enjoying your class. I always remember it being not just a class, it was an experience. You simply picked up the ball and you ran with it. If there was something that needed to be done, you did it. We saw that in student council, we saw that in law and political action classes. He remembers and so much, <laughs> way more than I, I remember. It's, this is crazy. When you're working with musicians, it's really important for you to gel. It's something where you just, you guys can feel the vibe, you feel each other. And that was something that we had in common. Um, so I've always respected that. Dial and Kiner, we started out as a group, actually. What I enjoy about Dial and is that he marches to his own beat. He doesn't let what's happening on the radio, whatever, influence his productions. You know that it's always gonna be unique with Dial and. And so he's an inspiration as well. Radio Angel Liz Black. We go back to when she was on radio at the college campus. She'd be the only one in the studio, but she was determined to make it. And her passion has uh, driven her now to be nationally nominated radio announcer in a major station of New York City. So, and she's always been a good encourager and she inspires me to continue on. I bring myself at the moment absorb all your feelings, experience it, and bring it to the craft. And that's part of soul. If you feel it, they will feel it. See, you're still teaching me. Yeah, well, right. I'm, I'm, I'm about to retire now. <laughs> One of the things that I always um, appreciated, and actually, I, now that I can see you in person, I can finally say thank you which was the, the day you asked me about college. And you, you really just said, have you ever considered going to college? And I said, no. But when you came and you asked me that, it really opened up my world of possibilities. It was in college that I realized what my purpose was. 
and that was music. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I appreciated was the day you, I, I, I performed. Mm -hmm. You told me you stayed around because you wanted to tell me. It's something I've never forgotten. You said, I just want to make sure I told you that you're good mm -hmm. and you should know it. You played with Sarah Vaughn, you played with George Benson, Ella, Dizzy, Miles, played with all of the greats. And for you to stop just to encourage me, mm -hmm. that meant a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Thank you, bro. Working with Carl is, you know, one of the things I enjoy watching him is, is grow and to stay at it, and it's been almost 20 years. Clay has worked with me, he's a great producer and friend. He's worked with me on each of my albums, and what I really admire about Clay is that even though it's been rough, even though he's had his ups and downs, uh, Clay has always been true to himself. Uh, I would say about 10 years ago, maybe a little more, I uh, had moved to Miami and was starting a new life, and. Uh, I gave up on songwriting and producing, believe it or not, and you know, it was one of those situations where I had thought I, maybe I peaked or maybe this is not work, gonna work out or maybe I heard it wrong, maybe I, I, I said maybe I eavesdropped on somebody else's dream or, or God said it to somebody else. And I wasn't making enough money to feed a family. We had, at that point, two children and a home, and I kept thinking maybe I should go on and, and, and do something different. So I, I started looking at the financial industry. I trained as an insurance agent. I, I really saw the potential. There's only one problem. It wasn't fun. Mm. I didn't enjoy it. So I had, like everyone else, some disappointments and discouragement. But you know, I made a commitment musically and I made a commitment spiritually. That would help me to continue to persist and go on. But I, I didn't let it deter me from what my goals were and my sense of purpose. And because I nailed that sense of purpose down a long time ago, <laughs> I mean, that was it. God reminded me of a, a moment I had with him in 2004 in Zimbabwe, Africa, of how he was gonna use my production gift to go to the next level. But before I knew it, I'm, I'm back at it again and stronger. I just decided I'll, I'll stick with my, my career. And I I'm, thank God I did. I, I, every day. It was, it, was a good, it was the smartest thing for me. I knew my purpose was teaching. I, I, I decided that I had to stay true to that goal, um, that, that that was the most important thing. And everybody has a different passion. And sometimes, some people, I think, don't really discover their purpose, or they discover it late in life. I would say, of the entire village, the most intimate and the most personal would be my wife and my sons. I couldn't do this without their support. My wife is my best friend and a constant encourager. And my sons, no matter what goes on, I know when I come home, I'm Superman. They're my biggest cheerleaders. They clap the loudest. They know all the words to the songs. And when I look in their eyes, I know that if I'm gonna teach them not to give up, I can't give up myself. And, and they complete my village of inspiration. Over the years, from time to time, I've used the expression, blessed to be a blessing. We are all God's children. And I think all of us have an obligation to help others any way we can. So the entire village inspire me to keep pushing. They're, they're living their passion. They, and it didn't come easy, but they kept pushing. They kept striving past that turning point. That's how I wrote this song. That's why I wrote this song, to encourage others to do the same. To go past the rough stuff, believe in your heart that this is who I am, this is who I was created to be, and and just go for it. Just, just go for it. Better turn for